evening and welcome. You are watching Prime Time News on TV One. Bringing you the news, I'm Tarushi Kumar Singha. Up first in your headlines. News first, headlines. Main sponsor. Valuable Finance, best finance company. Opposition against the Yugodanavi power plant deal spreads across the island. 11 government affiliated parties embark on a new journey. One of our banks blacklisted in China. What happens to the Chinese company that sent fertilizer with bacteria? Will the COVID-19 vaccination card be made mandatory to enter public places? Supreme Court dismisses petition filed by Jalia Vikramasurya to protect his diplomatic privileges. Heavy rain hits the hill country. Badulu Oya overflows. <laughs> News first, headlines, main sponsor. Valuable Finance, best finance company. Top story tonight. The Department of Meteorology said that a low pressure area is in the vicinity of Sri Lanka and under the influence of this system, showers or thunder showers will occur at times in most parts of the island. Heavy showers above 100 millimeters can be expected at some places. One person was washed away by strong currents in Alla today. The Disaster Management Center has warned that multiple roads in the central hills remain inundated due to torrential downpours experienced in those areas. The Badulla District Assistant Director of the Disaster Management Center, M. Uday Kumara, speaking to News First, said that the collapsing earth embankments between Alla and Namunukula pose a serious threat. In addition, the water levels in the Badulu Oya are also rising due to heavy rains. Video obtained by News First showed rising floodwaters while locals scramble for safety. The disaster management center said many line houses in the estates have been damaged by showers and strong winds. Roads in many parts of the central hills have also been blocked due to heavy rains. Many roads in Hatton were inundated. Our correspondents noted that houses were damaged by strong winds. The Department of Meteorology in its weather advisory said heavy showers about 100 millimeters can be expected at some places in the northern province and in Putlam, Anuradhapura and Trincomalee districts during the next 24 hours. Naval and fishing communities have been advised not to venture into the sea areas off the coast extending from Mulatevu to Putlam via Kankasanthure until further notice. The Med Department predicts the wind speed to be increased up to 60 to 65 kilometers per hour in the above sea areas. Electricity workers protested across 19 workstations in the country, demanding the government to suspend the agreement with New Fortress Energy Inc. over the transfer of shares of the Keravalapitiya power plant. The main demonstration was staged opposite the Deputy General Manager's Office of the Sidon Electricity Board. A petition was signed in line with the protest. We will abandon our stations on the 3rd of November and come to Colombo. Let's see if the government can stop us. It is clear that it's not the government or the cabinet that controls this country. 
The brothers are ruling the country. These cruel leaders will sell all our assets and fly to the US on the next flight. We need a country to live and die. We will do whatever we can do to ensure that, just like the sugar queue, the gas queue, the milk powder queue, there will be queues for candles in the future. United Trade Union Alliance of the Ceylon Electricity Board staged protests across the country including Kandy, Kuranagala, Badulla, Trinkamali, Anradhapura, Gaul and Kuliapitiya. Eleven government-affiliated parties, including the Sri Lanka Freedom Party, joined hands with a number of other organizations today as the People's Council to voice their opposition against the LNG power plant deal. The People's Council convened in Pitakote today. Venerable Omare Kassapathero, Venerable Murutetwe Anandathero and Venerable Professor Madhagoda Bethesathero had also attended the meeting. Among the representatives of the 11 government affiliated parties were Vimal Virawansa, Uday Gammampilla, Dai Sirijai Sekara, Professor Tisavitharana, Tiranalas, ALM Ataula, Asangana Ratna, Gavind Kumar Tunga and Virasumana Virasingha. Venerable Athrulia Ratnathero also attended the meeting. Do you know how this cabinet paper was submitted? We were all attending the online meeting. We concluded speaking about the cabinet papers that we were aware of. Other matters then came up. The Minister of Finance questions the Secretary of the Cabinet saying, I also submitted a paper today. Isn't that one there? The Secretary of the Cabinet then said, I received it after I sat down for the meeting and I couldn't even read through it. He then asks the Finance Minister if he can explain it. Generally, a Cabinet paper is explained to the Cabinet of Ministers by the Secretary to the Cabinet. Although I haven't been in the Cabinet of Ministers for a long time, I have never encountered a situation like this before. That ended like that. The next day, when a few people, including myself and Gamampilla, were discussing about what happened, the cabinet minutes came out. They stated that after a lengthy explanation made by the Minister of Finance on the matter, the cabinet of ministers agreed to these decisions. At that point, I wondered if I was dreaming. That was how this deal was approved. I will say this in court. There was no discussion held on the matter. This was brought in secret. We cannot agree to all of this just to hold on to our ministerial portfolios and act against our conscience like this. We are not of such a culture. We claimed that the end of J.R. Jayawardena, Premadasa and Chandrika was full of corruption but I must regrettably say that something like this never happened even then. This American company will be able to decide if they want to keep Sri Lanka in the dark or not. If they keep Sri Lanka in the dark and demand for action to be taken against our war heroes, what can we do? If they demand that we bring in a federal constitution, what can we do? We must point out that as long as gas power plants are there in Sri Lanka, the key to controlling Sri Lanka has been handed over to the Americans through this contract. If we continue to hold on to our ministerial portfolios and agree with everything that they do, future generations in our country will curse us. While giving out our message to the American agents that we are ready to sacrifice not only our ministerial portfolios but any and everything need to oppose this, I invite the entire nation to join us in the struggle to save the country. None of us are still aware of what kind of an agreement has been signed with the company New Fortress. All we can say is that they said two more agreements will be signed along with this agreement. They asked us to submit our proposals before that and we are formulating a plan on how we are going to work on that. Why are these ministers and parliamentarians complaining to us? What do you expect us to do? The people's frustrations towards the action of the government continues to grow. If they are trying to send a group of people to oppose this and they say we told you so, that is not going to work. You should not come to us for advice on how to save the LNG power plant. There are people who have been elected to do this. It is good that you are highlighting the LNG deal and are holding discussions with us. You cannot corner all the disgust only on this LNG deal and then hand it over to us and save your skins. 
Representatives of 11 government affiliate parties who are members of the People's Council held a discussion chaired by the President at Temple Trees yesterday. General Secretary of the Sri Lanka Bodhijana Perumana Sagara Kariwasam said that no views were expressed regarding the meeting which was scheduled to be held today. As far as I know, we do not have 11 affiliate parties. We don't have representatives of 11 parties in Parliament. No one said that they will hold a rally. No one came forward and made a bold statement like that. The party general secretary said that the finance minister clarified facts on the Yugodanavi power plant deal with the American company New Fortress. At the end of the meeting, everyone who attended the meeting understood that there is no issue surrounding the LNG power plant deal. They understood that this is a deal that is clean and will benefit the country. He specifically said the deal has not yet been finalized. The matter has been forwarded to the Attorney General to examine further and to do the needful. It was clearly stated that all party leaders can express their views on this matter. Minister Johnston Fernando expressed his views regarding this matter today as well. We cannot say that every decision taken by trade unions is right. They opposed the sale of the East Container Terminal. But what happened as a result of that? We kept the East Terminal with us because of their efforts. It was done by trade unions together with other parties. But what did they give? They gave something better. We must find out what they represent. The people must decide whether their actions to keep the country without electricity for two days is justifiable or not. It is clear that there is a hidden force behind this movement. There must be a limit to these protests. Some factions provide funds to these protests. We would like to request the media to reveal them to the public. Meanwhile, court has affirmed the right of trade unions to engage in reasonable trade union actions. This was highlighted when a complaint filed by Sri Lanka police against a protest at the agitation site opposite the presidential secretariat was taken up in court today. The Satyagraha campaign launched by trade unions representing teachers and principals urging the president and the finance minister to intervene and resolve a 24-year-long salary anomaly entered its fourth day today. The campaign is being staged at the agitation site at the Goldface Green opposite the presidential secretariat. A tense situation arose when the police handed over a court order to the protesters at the agitation site, requesting them to appear before the fort magistrate court. <laughs> Meanwhile, a group including Venerable Ulapane Sumangalathera appeared before the Fort Magistrate Court representing teachers. Justice was meted out to the teachers. The court rejected all matters raised by the police. The court has affirmed the right of the teachers. The court has made room for teachers to carry out the Satyagraha campaign in a peaceful manner. The court confirmed our right to engage in protests and launch the Satyagraha. We are ashamed and disgusted by the police. The Samagi Janabalavegia staged a protest in Kandy today, demanding the government to provide solutions to the fertilizer crisis in the country and the rise in cost of living. Opposition leader Sajid Premadasa also attended the protest. Politicians of the Samagi Janabalavegia were also present. The government has taken away the people's right to live 
as the main alternative government the people have, we have taken to the streets with the people who are suffering and are standing with them to protect their democratic rights, including their right to life. No matter the anti-democratic actions of the government or the oppressive and threatening tactics they use to implement state terrorism, all of this can be defeated. The greatest power in this country is the power of the people. Bullets, bombs and T-56 guns cannot silence the people. We will secure power with the support of the people through democratic means and create a bright future. We will bring prosperity to this country. Another protest organized by the Samagijana Balavegya was staged in Gampula today. Why did China blacklist the People's Bank of Sri Lanka? We have the details coming up right after this short commercial break. Stay tuned. TV1 News First, main sponsor. Students complete the ACBT University Entry Foundation in eight months for 288,000 rupees. One qualification, two destinations. All other students can save time, money, and stress. For 288,000 rupees, complete the ACBT Foundation in eight months and enroll into universities in UK, Australia, or ACBT partnered universities in Sri Lanka. Enrolling now. Call 071 115 Welcome back to the news. The People's Bank of Sri Lanka was blacklisted by the Economic and Commercial Office of the Chinese Embassy in Sri Lanka for failing to make the payment according to the letter of credit and the contracts between the two parties. The Chinese Embassy said all Chinese enterprises are reminded to tighten risk control and avoid accepting LCs issued by People's Bank of Sri Lanka in international trade with Sri Lanka. Recently, the Chinese fertilizer enterprise Chindao Seawin Biotech Group requested to get the payment of LC by People's Bank of Sri Lanka according to the contracts. The Chinese Embassy said disregarding the contract obligation, the business rules, and international trade customs, the People's Bank of Sri Lanka defaulted the payment of LC and caused huge losses to the Chinese enterprise. However, organic fertilizer samples from China's Qindao Seawin Biotech Group tested for the presence of harmful pathogens not once but twice in tests carried out by Sri Lanka's National Plant Quarantine Service. Sri Lanka subsequently decided not to accept the consignment of fertilizer sent from China. Against such a backdrop, the Sri Lanka state fertilizer companies obtained an enjoining order against the Chinese company Chindao Seawin Biotech, its local agent and the People's Bank from the Commercial High Court. However, People's Bank issuing a statement said that it is bound by an enjoining order issued by the Commercial High Court of Sri Lanka with regard to the trade transaction in question, which precludes the bank from processing the payment. The release added that the Chinese embassy has already been informed of this. People's Bank also said that the temporary delay in processing the said payment pertaining to the LC is solely due to the bank's obligation to be bound by the legal directions of the country as a responsible corporate citizen. It added that once the legal barriers in effect are removed, the LC payment will be effected promptly as per the usual trade practices. The National Plant Quarantine Service identified the harmful bacteria in the stock of fertilizer imported from China. Can Sri Lanka blacklist the Chinese company for providing substandard fertilizer? I don't know why they blacklisted the People's Bank. The People's Bank has not stopped its payments. They have been given a court order. The People's Bank is bound to act according to the court order issued to them. It is the Ceylon Fertilizer Company that has received the enjoining order. We cannot ban the company concerning this agreement. What we can do is import fertilizer that meets the required standards as per the agreement. Meanwhile, the Hippo Spirit ship carrying 20,000 metric tons of organic fertilizer that had left the Chindao port in China does not appear in the network of maritime trade routes. Where is this ship at present? 
It was last seen on the 24th at the seas of Hambantota. The ship's name has later changed to Seiyo Explorer. The Chinese company said that the rejected fertilizer sample should be given to a third party with the approval of the two concerning factions for retesting. The Minister of Agriculture, however, said that Sri Lanka will not agree to retest the stock of fertilizer. Recently, the Agriculture Minister said that a new stock of fertilizer must be delivered to Sri Lanka and those samples can be tested. The National Plant Quarantine Service expressed the following views regarding the preparation to direct the rejected fertilizer samples to a third party for retesting. An application form was given. According to that, we issued an import license. Samples were imported based on that. The legal responsibility to test the samples lies with us. Upon testing, we identified bacteria harmful to agriculture. We cannot let that into the country. We have informed them. that is true. If the National Quarantine Services Center identifies a sample as unfavorable to the country and if a third party begs to differ, we cannot let it into the country. Meanwhile, Politburo member of the Janata Vimukti Peramuna, Dr. Nalinda Jayatissa, made a revelation regarding the Chinese fertilizer deal yesterday. What is the relationship between Prime Minister's Secretary Gamini Senrat and Lolita Bezingha, the chairman of the local agent of China's Qingdao Seawin BioNTech Company? We asked the Prime Minister's Secretary Gamini Senrat to come before the media and explain his relationship with Lolita Basingha. The people will then be able to realize why the government is so committed to this deal. In response, the office of the Prime Minister issued a statement today. According to the statement, the Prime Minister's Secretary Garmin Senorat says that although one of the directors of the local agent of the Chinese company is related to him, the relationship had no bearing on the commercial activities of the company. The Secretary to the Prime Minister had stressed that he had in no way intervened or influenced any decision in handing over the contract to this company. The statement added that Garmin Senorat requests any party with evidence that he had intervened in this matter to lodge a complaint with any investigating institution of the country. As we reported earlier on in the bulletin, most parts of the country are experiencing showers or thunder showers. With this rain, water levels of wavers have increased as well. As a result, spill gates of many reservoirs will be opened so that cultivations for the Maha season can be carried out successfully. Nature has given the green light for farmers to start cultivating the Maha season. But can the farmers cultivate without fertilizer? Farmers across the country staged protests today as well, demanding authorities to resolve the fertilizer crisis in the country. The Mahavali Sea Zone Farmers' Rights Protection Organization staged a protest in Girandru Kote this morning. Representatives of 52 agrarian organizations of the Mahavali Zone attended the protest. They said that poverty will be eradicated, but now they have abandoned poor people. There is no sugar, maize and paddy. 
अपनी महावैलिया खा डाला मैं कुमरु करा ला मैं मैं आउरु खान आउरु तो हाथ लिया पैदा करूँ पे। They told farmers with more than 40 years of experience to use compost fertilizer. Farmers must stand up for farmers. We don't care for politics. गोविया के पैते हिटा का नपर देश बाल लिया पैदा करने। अभी कुमरु अगर नकरो गोविया तिवराई दोस्तर तिवराई नी दीजिया तिवराई। If we stop farming, doctors, lawyers, and businessmen will be done for. This is a problem for the entire country. Understand that and provide a solution to this. If they can give chemical fertilizer to banana farms and multinational companies, give us chemical fertilizer as well. The fast commenced by the farmers of the Alahara Agrarian Movement entered its sixth day today. We do not need water. Give us fertilizer. This won't work if there is no fertilizer. The president will go to America. The farmers will have to stay here. It is not the advisers who voted for you. It is us. Meanwhile, All Ceylon Agrarian Federation convened a media briefing in Giritali today and warned of a price hike in Paddy. The leaders of the government have gone insane. Because of their insanity, the entire country is running wild. The price of Kirisamba will definitely increase to 350 to 400 rupees. The price of Nadu will increase to 250 to 300 rupees. Large-scale mill owners know this. Businessmen are aware of this. Those who handle capital expenditure know this. They think ahead. They have a vision. The government doesn't have a vision, nor knowledge. The government has ignored this. Chairman of the Consumer Affairs Authority and Paddy Marketing Board resigned. Senior professors of the Agriculture Department have also resigned. The administration of the country has weakened. There is no administration. Yesterday, Moody's Investors Service downgraded Sri Lanka's ratings on the country's ability to repay its debt. The central bank, however, in response said the government was committed to meeting its debt obligations. What is Moody's Investors Service saying? Moody's Investor Service has downgraded Sri Lanka from CAA2 to CAA1. This is in terms of the country's ability to repay debt. Moody's said there is a risk Sri Lanka may fail to repay its debt as it has very low foreign exchange reserves. Now we should uh, realize that uh, these rating agencies like whatever it is Moody's or Fitch, uh, Standard & Poor's, whatever, these are globally accepted rating agencies. Uh, nobody would listen to a individual person talking on behalf of a Sri Lankan rating, but they would, uh, all agencies, international agencies would look into actual rating given by these uh, globally accepted agencies. So if we are trying to make, uh, reject these uh, ratings, that will even uh, make the situation worse. That reflects, that gives us the uh, idea that uh, the Sri Lankan authorities are not happy to accept uh, something uh, that is internationally accepted. That will even make worse, that will even worse the situation. What is the central bank saying? In a statement, the central bank said, quote, The rating action is irrational as the government prepares to announce its budget for next year. End quote. While expressing disappointment, the CBSR said, Moody seems to be derailing Sri Lanka's potential during a global pandemic. How will this affect Sri Lanka? Sri Lanka's official foreign exchange reserves had dropped to 2.5 billion US dollars by the end of September. Experts opine that the economy is being likened to a ticking time bomb that could go off at any moment as foreign reserves plummet. The cost of living rises and the central bank carries on printing money. The effects of this downgrade obviously will be very difficult. It will be even difficult for Sri Lanka to borrow given that uh, we are currently experiencing foreign reserve limitations and uh, high inflation in the country, it will be even difficult for Sri Lanka to borrow in future uh, with the current downgrade in rating. Uh, that will also affect the Sri Lankan economy in a negative manner. So uh, it will be very difficult for Sri Lanka to enhance their production also to deal with ongoing inflation. Even if Sri Lanka manages to borrow given the rating downgrades, borrowings would be on high uh, interest rates and there will be even unfavorable terms on such uh, borrowing. 
State Minister of Samurdi, Household Economy, Microfinance, Self-Employment and Business Development Shehan Sema Zingha also spoke about the rating downgrade following an event in Anuradhapura today. International rating agencies have at numerous times downgraded and upgraded many countries' economies. The global recession the entire world is experiencing has affected our country as well. We are hoping to economically strengthen our country and get our rating upgraded when the government creates a conducive environment to do so. Meanwhile, Fitch Ratings has upgraded the Maldives' long-term foreign currency issuer default rating, or IDR, to B- from CCC. According to the Fitch Ratings, the upgrade of the Maldives' IDRs reflects a stronger recovery from the tourism sector. Fitch Ratings said, quote, Maldives' recovery was stronger than previously expected and an improved, though still challenging, refinancing outlook for the sovereign's external debt over the next few years, end quote. Making headlines tonight, the COVID-19 committee today highlighted the fact that they are looking into the possibility of making it mandatory to have a vaccination card when visiting public places. This was revealed at the meeting of the COVID-19 committee that was chaired by President Gotabe Rajapaksa today. We have received a request to resume classes for students studying for their ordinary and advanced level examinations. We will give permission for that. We must grant permission to do that. I have received many letters from these students and they have informed me in person and requested for them to be allowed to attend classes. About 500 positive cases are being reported and we must look into reducing this. It will be easy for us to control the spread when the numbers are low. Representatives of the health sector said that the possibility of resuming the academic activities for students in their first year at universities is being looked into. They added that the opinion of the Attorney General has been inquired on if legal action can be taken against people who have refused to get vaccinated. The President proposed to deploy mobile units to vaccinate people living in rural areas. Matters pertaining to the tourism sector was also discussed at the meeting. We need to look into the tourism sector. It is very important to us. We need to earn back the income that we lost. This sector has crashed. Everyone should focus their attention on this sector as well. Sir, we are carrying out the campaign that the country is reopened from the 1st of November and the travel restrictions have been lifted and that restaurants can be reopened. Weddings have been limited to 150 guests. There is a huge demand for weddings as well. With the situation in India, they want to come to Sri Lanka for their weddings. Could we increase the capacity allowed at these weddings? Because they come here together and stay at a hotel and leave together. Only a few people who come down for weddings go to other places as tourists. They come for the weddings and then leave. So if they are attending the wedding in a bubble, we can do it. There are a number of international sporting events in Sri Lanka. Football teams from the Maldives, Seychelles and Bangladesh are coming to Sri Lanka. The LPL tournament is being played in Colombo and Suryavava in December. We have received inquiries from over 1,000 people to come to the country to watch the Maldives-Sri Lanka match. We believe that we can bring down about 10,000 tourists into the country for only the football and cricket tournaments. If we are being given some concessions to do that, Honorable President, we can give the QR code of the pass issued at the airport to the ground. Give us a plan on how these people are going to come, where they will stay and from where they will watch the matches from. We brought you the news of Sri Lankan Professor Sujit Sevasundaram winning the 9th British Academy Book Prize for Global Cultural Understanding 2021 last night. Earlier this evening, I myself spoke to Professor Sevasundaram about his book, Waves Across the South, which enlightens the reader of the greatness of the global southern sea in the early 1900s. Professor, one of the judges, uh, Patrick Wright, speaking about your book, uh, said, 
and I quote, waves across the South is a riot of ingenuity, a truly powerful and new history of revolutions and empires reimagined through the environmental lens of the sea, end quote. How did you incorporate the great ocean in unraveling this story? Well, you know, I grew up uh, in Vanuatu uh, and I, I, I live close to the beach. And so the ocean, um, being Sri Lankan, the ocean has always been there at the back of my head. The port of Colombo expands massively in the 19th century due to all the ships that arrive. Um, but goods go across the ocean, ideas go across the ocean. So this is a history that's not a national history, by the way. It is a history of all the links and the connections between island societies uh, and across the sea. So the sea is a very significant medium, uh, a very significant conduit, really, for imperialism, for invasion, for uh, but also for modes of resistance to imperialism. Professor, before this book, uh, Waves Across the South, you also penned Islanded. Uh, as well, which delves deep into the forgotten legacy of uh, the global south. Uh, coming back to the present day where Sri Lanka is now in the crosshairs of geopolitical rivalries, what is your take on that? Yes, no, it's, it's a really in interesting moment with China, with India, uh, with this Cold War in the Indian Ocean. And so one could actually think about the, the, the challenges that we face today in light of the challenges that we have faced in the past and the resources that we have had as Sri Lankans to face those challenges. So as a small society, we're a small society, we're a small island uh, on the world map, but actually we're at the center of the Indian Ocean world and we have been able to resist, we have been able to meet challenges. You can watch the full interview on our news first Facebook and YouTube channel. Making headlines tonight, Supreme Court rejected an appeal filed by former Sri Lankan ambassador to the United States, Jalia Vikramasurya, challenging the Court of Appeals decision to dismiss a writ petition filed by him regarding diplomatic immunity. The Supreme Court reaffirmed the appeal court's decision on the 29th of March 2018 to dismiss the petition filed by Vikram Asuria challenging the Foreign Affairs Ministry's decision to waive his diplomatic immunity. On the 23rd of October 2017, the then Secretary of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in a statement announced that Jalia Vikramasurya was stripped of his diplomatic immunity and the latter thereafter challenged this decision with the Court of Appeal. However, the Court of Appeal dismissed the application without even issuing notice to the respondents. In his application to the Supreme Court, Vikramasurya had sought an order to make null the appeal court decision and also order the Foreign Secretary to inform the U.S. officials that he is still entitled to diplomatic privileges. Venerable Dr. Omar Pesobitatero expressed the following views during a media briefing held today. A presidential task force has been appointed to present recommendations on one country, one law. There is no issue regarding the committee or the individuals who have been appointed to it. This is a practical illusion. Recommendations on one country, one law has already been introduced in the constitution of the Republic of Sri Lanka. The only thing that needs to happen correctly is implementing the constitution. At present, we can see that the law is being implemented based on the whims and fancies of certain people. There is one law for politicians who betray the country, another law for ordinary citizens. We can clearly see a lack of backbone of the current Attorney General. He is extremely lenient towards the ruling party. Who is the Attorney General? He imposes cases prosecuting people. Then he himself withdraws them a few months later, saying that there is not enough evidence. Was he unaware of this when he filed the case? The only thing these committees have been able to do successfully is to waste more and more of our public resources. On to a story that raised not a few but many eyebrows across the world. Facebook has changed its corporate name to Meta as part of a major rebrand. This comprehensive report was filed by Mariam Gunavijaya of News First. Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg said his company is rebranding itself as Meta in an effort to encompass its virtual reality vision for the future, what Zuckerberg calls the Metaverse. The new name won't affect how the company uses or shares data, and the corporate structure isn't changing. 
With the announcement, Zuckerberg also unveiled plans to build Metaverse, an online world that allows people to game, to work and communicate in a virtual environment, often using virtual reality headsets. We've built things that have brought people together in new ways. We've learned a lot from struggling with social issues and living under closed platforms. And now it is time to take everything that we have learned and help build the next chapter. Skeptics point out that it also appears to be an attempt to change the subject from Facebook papers, a leaked document trove dubbed by a consortium of news organizations. Many of these documents have revealed how Facebook ignored or downplayed internal warnings of the negative and often harmful consequences its algorithms wreaked across the world. Francis Hogan, age 37, who worked as a product manager on the civic integrity team at Facebook, was interviewed by foreign media recently. She said the documents she leaked proved that Facebook repeatedly prioritized growth over safety. There are also others who think that this rebranding is aimed at covering up Facebook slip-ups, including the recent worldwide blackout on all of their platforms. However, what can we expect from this rebrand? Facebook recently shared their vision for Metaverse and highlighted the concept that they can share with us. Starting with the most important experience of all, connecting with people. Imagine you put on your glasses or headset and you're instantly in your home space. Imagine if you could be at the office without the commute. You would still have that sense of presence, shared physical space, those chance interactions that make your day all accessible from anywhere. Here, you'll see you're chatting with friends on WhatsApp and planning a game night. You can select a game and then, as you walk over your kitchen, you can easily just put your game onto the table and you're off. And that's the kind of experience that augmented reality will unlock. And that's a wrap of the news. Thank you for watching and good night.